Hi YouTube, welcome to Can They Say That? I am Gina Berkmeyer. And I am Polly Hamp. And this is our wonderful guest, Redonda Rowden. Today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit heavy, but super important. We're going to talk about post-traumatic church syndrome. Hmm. Redonda actually <laughs> runs a very unique group for people who have been injured, really. Mm -hmm. uh, underneath the umbrella of the church. And so we're going to talk about that today. So hang with us at the end. We're going to have some really important next steps. I think this is something wherever you are on your belief um, meter, this mm -hmm. is something that's mm -hmm. really important to, to know and to hear. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to this. So thanks for being here today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having me. And we're going to get started. Here we go. Okay. Um, can they say that? 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 They can and they will. Say what you want to say. Let the words fall out. Honestly, I want to see you be brave. What you want to say. Welcome everyone to Can They Say That? I am one of your hosts, Gina Berkmeyer. And I am one of your other hosts, Holly <laughs> Hamp. <laughs> and we are glad you are here. Yes, and today we have a very special guest with us. Today, Redonda Routon is joining us. Welcome, Redonda. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Such a pleasure to be with you guys. Redonda is amazing. She is a PLPC in Missouri. She has been raised in ministry throughout her life, and she and her husband have actually done ministry for 25 years. Together. Really, from coast to coast, right across the country, and you've been a part of a whole lot of churches, and you've done a whole lot of ministry and shepherding, and you've probably seen it all in that time. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. And, yeah. and gratefully. I mean, you <laughs> yes. know, worked with a lot of really wonderful people. I want to say, actually, we spent a lot of time, my husband and I, were in music ministry. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, for in order for him to focus on the music aspect, I dealt with the people aspect. Mm -hmm. Our desks were six inches apart most <laughs> of the time. So we got to, um, you know, do this 24-7 yes. and work with all that that involves. Um, but I wouldn't trade those experiences. Some of them were tough. Yes. Um, I think I was probably, I mean, being raised in ministry, my father was a pastor, my grandfather was a pastor, my brother is a pastor. Mm, wow. Actually, I have 27 pastors on oh, one wow. side of the house. So the lineage oh, is man. very huge. <laughs> yeah, talk about being over church. Right. <laughs> so in that time, you've seen a lot of things mm. done really, really well. Really, really and I'm well. sure you've seen some things that have gone not so well, Absolutely. which leads us to why you're here today, yeah. this mm -hmm. group that you do called yeah. Post Traumatic Church Post -traumatic. Syndrome, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk more about. Would you say a little bit about um, your education, why you chose to take the avenue you did to education with the balance of theology and psychology? Well, I went to, I decided to, um, because I had done so much counseling, in ministry, I decided my kids were grown, and I decided I might as well put some education behind this. Mm -hmm. I had gone to school off and on, but uh, I decided at 48 years old to go to the seminary. I love it. Yes. Fantastic. And so I was, you know, I, here I am in this classroom with all these 25-year-olds, <laughs> and I'm thinking, these kids are sponges. I've got about three good brain cells left. <laughs> However, I do have a little life experience behind Correct. me, so that's what, yeah. I think that's what pulled me through, and, and just the mercy of God, <laughs> but um, I knew that this was a path that I needed to take, mm -hmm. because um, I had seen so much, and I had dealt with so much, and I just don't believe that God wastes opportunities yeah, that he, that he that has to go through. Mm -hmm. So, um, however, I you know, in the process, I had a lot of experience dealing with different um, different cases that were that always even my supervisors would say wow these these are tough mm -hmm. and so and I wasn't afraid of them because I think my personality is the, you know the strong type mm -hmm. um, and so those type of things I had probably had an example in the past to refer refer back to so um, I wasn't afraid to take them on mm -hmm. so but what was funny was uh, and it's not necessarily funny, but I think you'll remember this. 
one day on Facebook, I posted not even a very good article, but an article regarding spiritual abuse in the yes, church. Yes, yes. I was actually one of your first commenters. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Me? Yes. yes. Me. But the comments that I got, not only on, you know, on the actual post, but privately, mm -hmm. from people all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away. Mm -hmm. Because I thought, you know, I have my, you know, I, I have my stories to tell, but I had no idea there were such stories. And will you give us a little snippet of the article for our listeners? Uh, what was sparking people to respond? Why you were getting such well, a big response? Just, just the fact of calling out spiritual abuse in the church, that that was possible. And if you, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I, I had a couple of comments of people saying, well, this is the way it's always been. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've, we've always, you know, swept it under the mm -hmm. carpet. And we, and so that, that basically fueled me mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I'm not the, I'm not a carpet sweep, you know, underneath the carpet type of person. So let's, let's look, see what this looks like. And so, um, being, I don't know if I was courageous or um, ridiculous, but I decided to write my own curriculum because I saw that there wasn't that much out there. And when we're talking about this spiritual abuse, how are we defining that for our listeners? Help them understand, because that can be broad, mm -hmm. but this is a little more specific. So tell them what we're talking about today. Spiritual abuse is whenever anybody in power over you in a spiritual way takes any kind of advantage in the name of God mm -hmm. to where that they they demean you, they um, you know they put you down. You feel they a lot of people literally feel that their confidence has absolutely been shaken and their faith has been shaken because the actions are so over the top. Mm -hmm. It's no different than any other kind of abuse in that way. It's just done in a situation that is is known as spiritual or in the name of God. Mm -hmm. So control, oppression, mm -hmm. um, belittling, Manipula mm -hmm. manipulation, manipulation. Mm -hmm. yeah. any of those things. In the worst, in the worst kind of ways. And you know, um, I read something not too long ago that spiritual abuse can range from anything from just a you know a small offense to terrorism. Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! And I wow. thought that was really really. A very good definition. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. And there's no boundaries to denomination. No. It's it's no, across no. the board. You know, no. I, I think that there are predators out there with personality disorders that are definitely out there mm -hmm. to, you know, to hurt and to harm because they have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe also that there are people out there that are that that do spiritually abuse that it's not necessarily there you know they don't get up in the morning and say how can i hurt so and so right you know and so from that standpoint that's a broad spectrum also mm -hmm. and it's hard though when you're hurt and you're emotional it's hard to to you know decipher or to decide you know which one that is now now the narcissistic which is the you know term we all you know go to first because it's so prevalent yeah. you know that's pretty you know that's pretty clear mm -hmm. but there are other aspects that are you know of people that um are in a situation where sometimes they're being expected to do certain things mm -hmm. by the narcissist so and, a trickle down yes okay. yes mm -hmm. and in a system you know you're talking about a church here that should love its people that mm -hmm. should you know people should be the focus but I have found out in mega churches, and the more they believe their own publicity, and the more popular they become, it becomes less about the people and more about the institution. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. Yeah, <clears throat> the ministry gets diluted. The, mm -hmm. yeah. Very much so. The why did we get in this in the mm -hmm. first place goes away. There's no yeah. room for the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Word of God says that we are wineskins and we leak. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we have put, we have put some people and personalities on such a pedestal mm -hmm. that we are looking, you know, we almost look at them like superheroes. Mm -hmm. And what we forget is that they are human beings. Mm -hmm. yes. They're flesh. Right. Infallible. Yeah, mm -hmm. Totally and completely. Mm -hmm. They deal with, with jealousy. 
they deal with right. the truth right. mm -hmm. or lack of, right. yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and we think, well, they must be perfect because they get up there and they, you know, they talk about themselves like they are near perfection. Mm -hmm. But let's remember the people who became perfect on this earth got taken to heaven. So everybody who's still here <laughs> has issues. Right. And we're not just talking about mega churches. This can happen in a church any size, oh, right? Absolutely. I have heard stories from clients and from friends who grew up in very small town churches mm -hmm. where there was just this prevalence of, um, you know, this is how we do things. This is how you live your life. Um, individual thinking or outside the box thinking was not permitted. Mm -hmm. um, it was very, sh it was a very shame based culture where either you do this or you're out, so to speak, uh, or there's something wrong with you. And I think that that can be in any size. Absolutely. Church. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, what we what we find and, and the story, I mean, the, the process that I hear more often than not is, you know, you're judged mm -hmm. by leadership, you're labeled, and then you're basically shown the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no, there's nowhere in the Bible that talks about, you know, that process. You right. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a process of Matthew 18 where we come together, mm -hmm. but only, and, and let me, let me say this to be fair, um, spiritual abuse, if, if someone is, is bringing some, another person in, if, if, if a spiritual leader is bringing someone in and who has done something incorrect and they are um they are dealing with them in love and they are pointing out their sin that is not spiritual right. abuse right yeah. if somebody is out there preaching a you know a theology that goes against the word of god in the church mm -hmm. and the leadership brings them in and in love tells them they can't do that mm -hmm. that is not spiritual abuse mm -hmm. you know a lot of people get it twisted um but that's, you know, if that was the case, we'd all be happy. But it, unfortunately, that's not been the case. Right. Yeah. So talk about some of those. Uh, we're going to talk about one particular church because we don't want to be specific about the church, but because there is such a trickle-down effect from this one, yeah. and it has tentacles out really throughout the world. The world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is Willow Creek. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of those situations because I had read the books we have, my husband and I had been to the conferences uh, and we appreciated the, the work that they did, okay? I don't want to demean that at all. However, um, when, one of the things I love so much about what ha we know Bill Hybels was the fact that he seemed to empower women mm -hmm. in ministry. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely loved that. Right, I yeah. thought that was, you know, he, he, um, he was probably the pioneer of that, if you want to, you know, if you want to put it that way, uh, of saying, look, these women have gifts. God has called them. Mm -hmm. Let's let them lead. Mm -hmm. um, so to find out that he was also a predator, yeah. uh, I, I really didn't want to believe it at first. A lot of people didn't. Yeah. You don't. It's, it's, it's still, people are still having a hard time. Yeah. Sure. And, and that makes absolute sense mm -hmm. because it, it's so, it's, you know, it's so, so dialectical. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very There's so. two things that are true yes. here. Um, but the, the more that's come out and the people, you know, the women that have, have told their stories and thank God they were brave enough and the yes. people that this came from, from a standpoint of former staff people who had integrity, yeah. right? You know, who who had you know who who had their facts together, who were fighting for what was right, right. Mm -hmm. you know, and then you know these brave women. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, it was just you know it, it was heartbreaking. It, it was it, it was heartbreaking to watch the church take a black eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it has mm -hmm. from that standpoint. So, you know, as I told my husband, seminaries will be talking about this case for years I to come. I think you're right. I and hope they will. Yeah. I hope they I will too. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we should all, every church should look at this mm -hmm. and, and take notes mm -hmm. because this is, a, this is a total case of, of, of a person who had too much power, mm -hmm. not enough accountability, mm -hmm. and believed that he could literally 
do and get away with whatever he wanted right. to do. So if they were going to take notes and take note of this, what would you add to their notebook? <sighs> the biggest thing I can think of is accountability, account accountability, accountability. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I do, I don't believe, and this is my personal opinion, I don't believe that there were very many people, if any, in this man's life that was telling him no. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that's really an important piece mm -hmm. is the difference between quasi-accountability, like, oh, but they mm -hmm. have so many people around them. Right. <clears throat> they have, you know, elders, they have other people on a pastoral team, they have this, they have that, which looks like accountability, mm -hmm. maybe smells like accountability, but it's really this entourage of yes people. So how do individuals that maybe aren't in that um, group, how do they know the difference between when, they're, when their um, teacher, when the person in leadership has true accountability and can be trusted versus that quasi-pseudo accountability? Is there a way to test that? Mm -hmm. I, think there, I think there are always signs. Mm -hmm. I think we choose whether to see them mm -hmm. or not. And I think that um, we get so enamored with the charisma and the talent. Mm -hmm. And look, there are good things that, that have come out of that church, no doubt. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so yeah. we, but I believe that there are also signs. I believe that when you look at a situation, and it may not be done by that person themselves, but when, when the people around them do not respond in love, mm -hmm. and there are so many accounts mm -hmm. of... Um, that happening, there being a just a group around him that if they decided that you weren't worthy or if you had issues. Now what's interesting is they're going to, you know, we're supposed to deal with people's issues right. as mm -hmm. leadership. That's correct. Right. Yes. You know, not, not, you know, get them out of there because they do have mm -hmm. issues. Um, I think there was a persona and a standard that, that, that he had created, and if people didn't fit into that mold, mm -hmm. they were just diminished. So I think what I'm hearing you say is pay attention to when things are brought to the table. Is there some restoration? Is there some repentance? Mm -hmm. Is there some walking through? Mm -hmm. If it is someone who is having a problem mm -hmm. or maybe different than leadership, uh, is it? Are they valuing that person? Are they walking through in a in a loving, grace filled way, or does it seem like the only people that stick around are the people that are completely falling in line? The enablers. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think what you have to do is is ask as many questions as you can. Mm -hmm. When they stop answering your questions. That's a sign. That's a good point. That lack of transparency mm -hmm. and the apology in itself from this, the, from Bill was not a, um, it was like, you know, I'm sorry this happened and all this, there was no empathy, there was no remorse, like, I'm so sorry this happened to the women. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's also a sign. You listen for mm -hmm. things like that, not in the big context of being caught, but what does right. it look like even throughout ministry? And I'd be curious to go back to, you know, not just Bill, but um, different different situations and listen to how they apologize to the people mm. because there's a difference between do they apologize do they apologize because right. that yeah. really wasn't an apology it mm -hmm. was a, a it was a statement of oh dang it i got caught sorry well, right. it was more of a uh they're colluding against me mm -hmm. this is all a big setup mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. shame me or to smear you know smear campaign whatever I didn't hear very much of, uh, of an apology at all, right, really. Right. Um, and, but your point is so is so right on, because what I found in dealing with so many people is that a simple "I'm sorry" would go a long way. Mm -hmm. Heartfelt, genuine, true. Yeah. And the next step of like, when I did that, it must have felt mm -hmm. dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. You know, and and. You just don't see that. No, don't. <laughs> what we're yeah. talking about in really plain, base level <coughs> terms is reconciliation and restoration. Yes. Yeah. And when and when that isn't there, that's that should be a definite warning light, right? Mm -hmm. And again, we're not just talking about what has happened in, with women. We're right. talking about spiritual abuse for anyone, anyone in right. the church, yes. men, women, whether it's about a sexual issue 
or a relational issue or a leadership issue or just a conflict of, of views or mm -hmm. the way someone's treating another person. Right. right. Well, and you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys can attest to this also. Um, you know, they may be they may be great at teaching it, mm -hmm. and I've heard ch churches do a m masterful job at teaching it. Mm -hmm. But following through, mm -hmm. especially when it's inconvenient, <laughs> is a different story. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it's like we're sitting there, you know, buying into this. We're we're taking you at your word. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting when, when, when something like this happens, there, there's going to be follow through. Right. But a lot of times what, what a lot of people get is, you know, well, you know, um, well, I've had people say, you know, when I called it out, they lied about me. Mm -hmm. They talked about me. Mm -hmm. They judged me. And they... And again, we're not just talking about women. We're talking about no. men, women. We're talking about any any person. Who yes. Is. If you ever point out the emperor is naked. Yeah, there it is, right? Yeah. There, yeah. It's like no, <laughs> you're you're gonna need to go now. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. Um, I have one question about just you know, we're in these churches, and there's churches that are doing a great job. There's yes. some that are just like fumbling on their faces. I love how you talk about it. it's like I. I had to do something. I can't keep sweeping this under mm -hmm, the rug. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything that we talk about, I keep picturing this rug getting bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And and bigger. Yeah. 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 And like, eventually we're all going to trip over it. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jesus is like, no rugs. Clean that up. No rugs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do you know if you're being abused? So say you've been mm -hmm. in a church system, uh, you've drank the Kool-Aid, you know, all of the things you've grown up since, you know, you were little. And so you've got this structure of religion um, and, and all these things. So how do you know that you're being abused? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I mean, this is kind of an overgeneralization. I don't mean it to be, but just the fact that you don't see the love, mm -hmm. the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, how Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, it's void of that. Um, you, you know, I see a lot of people um, go into situations and, and there's such disappointment there. Mm -hmm. Because not only, you know, they, they have this, you know, they're getting this, this word from the, the, you know, from the stage that it's this and this and this. Yet or they're in not, private. Yes, mm -hmm. but they're not seeing these things. Mm -hmm. You know, so when there's two, you know, when there's two distinctive, different mm -hmm. stories going mm -hmm. on here, mm -hmm. you have to stop and you have to say, wait a minute, something's not right. So that experience that is incongruent with the, with what's being told is who mm -hmm. this person mm -hmm. is and what you're being told by the person is not consistent with your experience personally exactly. of that person. Okay. Yeah. And not only that, you see a large turnover. Mm -hmm. Of people, mm -hmm. you know, that's always a sign. Mm -hmm. You, you know, yes, people, you know, God leads them elsewhere. Yada yada. yada. I mean, mm -hmm. we've all heard that, mm -hmm. but there are also reasons, a lot of times, mm -hmm. behind that. And so, um, that's that's something definitely, you know, to look for and to watch for. Mm -hmm. uh, are they consistent? Are they mm -hmm. practicing what they, you know, what they preach? Where's the love? And what's, you know, are these people staying? Mm -hmm. Are they, you know, are, are they leaving for what reason? Right. Okay, so then take us to the next level. Uh, if someone is experiencing that confusion, that sense of oppression, that sorrow of spirit, that inconsistency, what do you suggest they do about it? Because um, we don't want people to get confused with leadership and God, because mm -hmm. those are not the same thing, right? And th so often people will walk away from Jesus yes, yes. because of what they've experienced in the church. So that is, I know, a huge focus on your curriculum is to keep them in relationship with the Lord. So how do you help people with that? Well, um, let me, I have two children that are 26 and 28. One's a musician in Nashville and another one is a worship leader. Okay. Um, and what I've taught my kids, the best safeguard that I could teach my kids, it, again, is people are human. They're going to sin. But that's not who God is. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
God, you know, we want to say, well, God, why do you allow? Mm -hmm. Well, we all have free will. Mm -hmm. We can, we have the power to act however we want to act, to believe whatever we want to believe. Still not who God is. Mm -hmm. God is still good. There are things, I wonder a lot of times if God doesn't look down at, at some of the situations that go on in his name. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's got to be some kind of sadness or, you know. Maybe. Yes. 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 Sure. yes. Absolutely. Because there are people, again, that, that, that will favor the institution and what, you know, what they can get out of it because everybody's profiting. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Instead of, but his heart is people. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I, you know, I, we get to the place where we do a, a, an amount of grieving. We, first of all, the first week, we, we just absolutely define what spiritual abuse is, what it looks like, mm -hmm. you know. Then we, we do, we talk about grief. Because people, the five stages of grief, grief because people lose a lot yes. when they leave a church. Yes. They lose friends. Some people lose, you know, um, if you're on, on a staff, you, you lose your livelihood. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of right. things. Right, community. Mm -hmm. just, All kinds. Yeah. Of, you know, it's traumatic. Right. But then we start to delve into, I want to focus on the person. Mm -hmm. So let's let's ask the question. If I can't, you know, if you can't look into yourself and say, "Wow, what what part did I have in it?" Mm -hmm. Because we we all do. You know what I'm saying? From the standpoint, and I think I think I I asked the question, "When or where did you give them all your power?" Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a tough question mm -hmm. and a good one. Yeah, that's a very really good, good question. One. Yeah, because I think that's important. Yeah. I, you know, was it because, you know, and there are some, there are some forms of abuse that are just, you know, cut and dry. Right. There was no, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. none of that giving away power. It was mm -hmm. just taken. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but there are other aspects of, you know, do we need to deal with some codependency? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do I keep this? Because what I'm, what I'm basically going to say to these people is, you know, yes, this has been a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And you may be stuck, but how can I move you from victim to survivor? Mm -hmm. Because you have all these gifts that God has given you. That are intended to be used within the community of, oh, his, of his family, which is the church, the Big C Church. Yeah. So how have you seen, can you talk, because we just have a few minutes left, I wish we had more time. I know. But I would love to hear maybe just a snippet of how you've seen some people come through to the yes. other side. I'll tell you what, I have had people come in the, into my group that... Um, could not go into the, to the, uh, even into the atrium or into the foyer without mm -hmm. having a panic attack. Wow. I have, I've heard people say, I couldn't sit through a service without a Xanax. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, people who haven't been to church for years because they just can't, they can't hear the sermon because they, their mind goes back. And, and it's so awesome to watch those people come around. Mm -hmm. Not and, and it takes time. I'm not saying that everybody that walks out of my group is automatically healed. Sure. You know, that's yeah, not, sure. That takes time. And, and, yeah. and that's okay. There are people that come in and say, I am really angry at God. And I'm like, I get it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, God is not up there. He's not fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, he can right. handle your anger. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's, just, let's just work from there. And there are going to be parts of this curriculum that you're not going to be ready for, and that's okay. Hold on to it, refer back to it, mm -hmm. okay. But let's let's let me give you some tools that you can use. And these people will come back. One lady, when I um, and I'm sure she she's not going to mind. Uh, when I first when I prayed for the first time when the first group session, she told me straight up, it really irritated me that you opened a prayer. <laughs> and by the yeah. end of by the end of the group. I forgot to open up in prayer, and she was like, aren't you going to pray? Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. So, I mean, there are stories, you know, there are people that are still dealing with, you know, mm -hmm. the emotional, but, you know, the panic attacks, that type of right. thing. However, they're starting to focus more on what they can give. Mm -hmm. Because I tell them, you can't change that's right. that's that right. situation. Mm -hmm. Right. God or has, that person. No, mm -hmm. God has to do that. Right. It's his church. So let him do that. You work on you because you have so much to offer and so much to give. Yeah. 
I don't care if it's from, you don't have to go back to church. You can start, you know, you can start going to a Bible study, a small group. Mm -hmm. However, you know, whatever, however little, make that effort. Start in, in your own devotion time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, we're going to have some listeners who have experienced this or maybe are just now realizing, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I think that might be me. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to make yourself available yes. to some of our listeners? They can reach you through us if that would be all right. Absolutely. Okay. And do you have like, because we just have a couple minutes left, do you have like maybe a, just one or two go-to books that if they don't do anything else, if they would just mm -hmm. go get this book and read it, what could you suggest? There's one out there called The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse. The Subtle Power of, of Spiritual, spiritual Abuse. abuse. Okay. By his name is Jeff Van Vonderen. Okay. Okay. You can get it on Amazon. It is. I think it's probably the most thorough. Okay. Of anything that I've read, and of course, I always recommend the Boundaries book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I so you know by Dr. Henry Cloud because mm -hmm. I so believe that mm -hmm. when you go back into the situation, you know, when you, when you get back into the church possibly the situation you need to be able to establish clear and precise boundaries right you have that's to good. be able to say no that's yes. good mm -hmm. i agree and then yes. adding to that the safe people mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and maybe in the flip, maybe even in yeah, the flip absolutely. order because boundaries does with my clients i so often say Boundaries is wonderful, mm -hmm. but in the Boundaries book, they so often refer to testing boundaries with safe people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what a safe person looks like, you can't really do that. <laughs> yeah. So yes. maybe read safe yeah. people first yes. and That's then true. move boundaries. on to boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, say here also, you have to have a good support system mm -hmm. to get through any trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. we all know that. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you are in a situation where you don't have safe people around you mm -hmm. or you don't have a good support system of godly people that you know you can trust, mm -hmm. start there. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. Thanks so much yes, for being here today. You. I mean, it's just been wonderful. Thank yeah, you. And thanks you. for making yourself available Absolutely. to our listeners and our YouTube watchers. Yes, so. anything that and I thank can you do. So much. And thank you for your heart and ministry mm -hmm. of what you do and reaching out and loving people. And Because it's hard to trust again. It's hard to move yes. into, it's like, okay, I don't trust people anymore. Right. But right. then right. having this group and um, a safe place right. is, is a yeah. huge beginning and very beautiful. So thank well, you thank for your you heart. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for your heart and doing this and helping people. Oh, it's Thanks. a privilege. Thanks it's so much. It's beautiful. Thank you. So thanks, everybody. This has been Can They Say That? Our guest has been Redonda Routon. And again, if you need to reach out to her, please do that through us. And we will make the resources that she has in her toolkit available to all of you on our website and our next steps. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Yay. Okay, YouTube. So thanks for sticking with. Um, make sure that you do check the website, which will be up and running soon. Um, this is, again, part of our season two, and, so we're really excited about yeah, all and that. And maybe they're watching right now, and the website is up. <gasps> it, go look. Either way, right there. Right there. Never know. It might be there. Redonda, <laughs> thanks again Thank so much. My pleasure. Thank Have you guys. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye. I'm coming up here. Polly, get it. Here we go. <laughs> I'm, like, about to turn oh. this off, and it's happening.